That's Elizabeth when she was between 10 and 11. Uh, she'd go out on dates with, with men, but she wasn't a prostitute. We're standing just at the location where the body would have been placed. The killer was a surgeon, not a meat cutter, not a butcher, a skilled professional surgeon. And he signs it, Black Dahlia Avenger. Cut across uh, the bone in order to separate. He won't teach me When you were 11? 11. My father had with me. On the morning of January 15th, 1947, in sunny Los Angeles, a routine walk turned into a horrifying discovery. A woman and her three-year-old daughter were strolling down South Norton Avenue in Leimert Park when they spotted something unusual in an empty lot. At first, it looked like a mannequin cut in half, lying motionless in the grass. But as they approached, the shocking truth became clear. It was the lifeless body of a young woman. This is the story of Elizabeth Short, better known as the Black Dahlia, which remains a haunting enigma, shrouded in layers of puzzles, mysteries, and unresolved questions. I want people to know she was a very nice person. She was not just beautiful outside, she was beautiful inside. Elizabeth Short was born in 1924 in Boston, Massachusetts. She grew up with her mother and four sisters in Medford. That's Elizabeth when she was between 10 and 11. Her mother raised her daughters alone. However, a few years later, she moved to California with her father at age 18. Short's dream was to become a movie star. Therefore, in 1943, without her father's support, she left to live alone. At this time, she was known as Beth, and people described her as a porcelain doll with black hair and light-colored eyes. Despite her delicate appearance, she worked part-time as a waitress, cashier, and model in Los Angeles. Most of the girls are applauded, thanked, and then quickly forgotten till the next contest comes along. She was broke, and she was borrowing money. Elizabeth lived in various accommodations, including hotels, apartments, and boarding houses. She was known for her beauty and friendliness. Well, basically, she lived off her friends. Didn't have a job. Uh, she'd go out on dates with, with men, but she wasn't a prostitute. In Florida, she met Matthew M. Gordon Jr., a member of the Army Air Force, who proposed to her from India. She says yes, but he dies soon after in an accident in 1945 before he can return to the United States. Fiancé's family never acknowledged any relationship between the two of them. In 1946, she returned with his previous boyfriend, Lieutenant Gordon Fickling. On January 9, 1947, Elizabeth returned to San Diego in the company of Robert Manley, who assisted her in securing a room at the Biltmore Hotel before departing. Despite informing Red Manley that she intended to return to Massachusetts the following day, it was later discovered to be a fabrication. Red Manley, one of the last individuals to see her alive, initially faced suspicion before being cleared of any involvement. The events that transpired between January 10th and 15 remain shrouded in mystery. However, on January 15th, 1947, Elizabeth's body was discovered in a desolate area, positioned disturbingly. The scene was profoundly unsettling, as her body had been meticulously washed and drained of blood, appearing pale and horrifically mutilated, severed in half. We're standing just at the location where the body would have been placed. Now this would have been a, a, a large vacant lot. The upper torso was juxtaposed just off to the left about uh, 12 inches. Do you have any idea why the body would be left here? Because the killer was sure that it would be found fairly quickly, as it was. Clearly, he wasn't trying to hide it. He wanted the notoriety. Her torso was cut in half at waist height with surgical precision. Her legs were fractured with a bat, and the murderer had ripped out her uterus, spleen, heart, and intestines. She was mutilated. 
Her mouth, cut from the corners up to the ears, gave her a dreadful look, like the Glasgow smile. According to reports, the victim was subjected to at least three days of severe torture. The autopsy findings indicated that she succumbed to shock, occurring between January 14th to 15th, resulting from severe facial gashes and a cerebral bleed. She was 22 years old at the time of her demise. Following her death, her fingerprints were forwarded to Washington, D.C., where they successfully identified her by cross-referencing with a 1943 police record for underage drinking. Part of the mystery was the shoes and the purse that were recovered, and we're going to go by where they were recovered. Uh, and one of the reasons that Mr. Manley, uh, who brought her back from San Diego, was able to identify the dirty shoes after they've been transported to the dump, well, one of them, because the other one was never found, uh, was because there was fresh taps that, he, of course, he paid to have put on. Nine days later, a man claiming to be the killer contacted the Los Angeles Examiner newspaper editor and delivered a package with Elizabeth's documents and belongings. So the case goes viral. And here are some, just a few of the headlines. This is viral in those days. <laughs> this is what we, what we call viral today, but back then it was, there were six major newspapers in Los Angeles and all headlines, uh, mostly above the fold, and it went for like 30 to 40 days straight. She was the main story for 30 she was, days. She was the story. Uh, well, I think the first one showed like two or three days uh, after the murder, uh, and then they came two or three days after that, so they came for several weeks. A man identifying himself as the Black Dahlia Avenger sent a letter to the police, making a conditional offer to surrender if they agreed to sentence him to 10 years in prison. The letter was deliberately covered with gasoline to thwart any potential fingerprint identification. Additionally, the sender crafted the message using cutouts from newspapers and magazines. Uh, he sends in a bunch of them. And then this one, he says he's gonna, on the note, he's, this was actually appeared on the front page of the newspaper. And it says, turning myself in on January uh, 29th, had my fun at the police. And he signs it, Black Dahlia Avenger. So it's a printed note that he, he sends in. And this is about the fifth or sixth note that he sent in. The others are disguised. Five or six notes already. Handwritten, disguised, in, in about a week or 10 days after the killing. And now, killing the was the technology at that time, are you aware? I mean, were they able to try to grab fingerprints off the letters? Could they have that technology back they, then? They had, the, they had fingerprint technology, but supposedly uh, they were soaked in gasoline, but I don't know about soaked, but they had the smell of gasoline on them and they, they, they weren't able to come up. Well, actually they did come up with some prints, whether they were the killers or not, we don't know, of course. They had some identified lifts that they were able to send to the FBI. According to rumors, Mark Hansen's wife was housing Elizabeth in their apartment at the time. Despite being the main suspect, he had police contacts and was declared innocent. Meanwhile, Elizabeth's father denied any involvement for three years and refused to identify the body. In contrast, Elizabeth's mother took care of the body under false pretenses, believing her daughter had won a beauty pageant. In reality, Elizabeth was the victim of an atrocious homicide. On January 26, 1947, the newspaper received a letter from the supposed killer, indicating the exact location where he would turn himself in. However, he changed his mind and vanished, and no one ever heard from him again. On a side note, the crime and its investigation were on the front pages of newspapers for 35 days straight since the discovery of the body. The Los Angeles Police Department conducted a thorough investigation. More than 750 people worked on the operation, bringing more than 190 suspects, but making zero arrests. Basically, there was a lot of corruption in LA, okay? so. The grand jury, the 49 grand jury said, you know, something's wrong here. None of these murders are being solved. You know, uh, the gangsters aren't being arrested. And back then you have to understand historically, LAPD was a very corrupt department. Half the department was on the table. The city council even offered a $10,000 reward for anyone who could provide significant leads about the case. As a result, more than 50 men and women gave false confessions, claiming to be responsible for the murder, which further complicated the investigation. Years later, over 500 testimonies had accumulated in the case, making it difficult to close. 
the extensive media coverage, including misinformation and withholding information, significantly impacted the investigation. The media often reported news before the police, leading to mistrust and confusion. The gutter press sensationalized this case, portraying it eccentrically. They claimed that Elizabeth was an adventurer walking around Hollywood Boulevard, that she toyed with men before rejecting them, that her skirt was too tight, and that she wore an expensive blouse. They also speculated that she was pregnant, a lesbian, and a prostitute. According to press records, the nickname Black Dahlia was derived from the flower, attributed to her habit of always wearing black clothes, which contrasted with her pale skin and for wearing these flowers in her hair. Employees from a kiosk in Long Beach mentioned that male customers referred to her this way, though the media likely fabricated the story. The term is also associated with the 1946 noir film The Blue Dahlia, which premiered a year before the crime and tells the story of a girl's disappearance. Though most documents from that time are now lost, or at least closed to the public, in 1999, homicide detective Steve Hodell studied the case intensely and concluded that his father, George Hill Hodell, one of the main suspects back then, had been the real killer of Elizabeth Short. Here's a photograph of me sitting on father's lap. And that's you here? Yeah. And that's your father? Right. Since the body was found mutilated with incredible precision, Many investigators thought that only an experienced doctor or surgeon could have been responsible for that. I started looking at the crime itself, and what I discovered, to my surprise, was that the killer was a surgeon. Not a meat cutter, not a butcher, a skilled professional surgeon. Subsequently, many doctors were accused, including Steve's father, George Hodell, a respected doctor. He had studied surgery and had a clinic specializing in intimidatingly transmitted diseases. His practice was just a few blocks away from the hotel where Elizabeth was seen alive for the last time. Steve believes Elizabeth might have been one of his father's patients, and according to witnesses, they might have been lovers as well. The person who committed this horrible crime cut across uh, the bone in order to separate one half of her body from the other half of her body. George Hodel owned an extravagant mansion in Hollywood where he would throw parties with many film industry celebrities and wannabes. I would describe it as looking like a Mayan temple. It really did. It was a fortress from the world. The kind of charm and power that he had. Flew to San Francisco. I'm sitting there with June, my stepmother, who had been with my father for 30 years. And June said, I think your father would want you to have this. And she handed me this small album. I looked at it and I said to June, June, who is this? And June said, I don't know, somebody your father knew from a long time ago. Steve believed that this woman was none other than Black Dahlia. I see strong similarities in the mouth and the nose, the hair. He also believes that his father might be responsible for the crimes of the Zodiac Killer, another criminal who remains unknown. Added to this, the psychological profile of George Hodel matched, to a great extent, the wicked nature of the crime. He had been charged with intimately abusing his daughter, Tamar. I have seen my father's cruelty. When I was 11, he wanted to teach me When you were 11? 11. Your own father? My own father. Former singer Michelle Phillips is Tamar's friend. This is how she'd grown up in this crazy environment with her father, and she had obviously been used as an object with him and his friends. It was all amazing to me. There was also proof that linked him to the death of his secretary and illegal abortions. But there was a problem. There are recordings of George Hodel that came to light in 2003, in which he admits being one of the suspects in the Black Dahlia murder and concludes by saying that they could never prove him guilty. Steve believes they didn't turn his father in, fearing they would uncover an illegal abortion organization and police corruption happening in the shadows of Los Angeles. On a side note, abortion was legalized in California in 1973. 
And it's my father's handwriting. I know my father's handwriting. There's, there was no, no question about it. So at that point, I thought, oh my God, this is the real deal. He reported his suspicion to District Attorney Stephen Kay. Steve Kay speaking. When Steve called me and told me what he had concluded, you could have knocked me off my chair. I, I, it was just, wow. Kay also agreed with Steve. However, the strange position in which the body was found particularly the angle of her arms, also resembled a painting called Minotaur by famous surrealist painter Man Ray, Dr. Hodel's close friend, with whom he supposedly shared dark fantasies. The body was positioned uh, north to south, so this is, this is north. It was carefully placed. You just, you're not gonna get these, this positioning. The hands were positioned over the head as if almost to form horns. It is speculated that the murder was part of an artistic piece in association with his friend, like an exquisite corpse. A crime so horribly shocking that it could stay engraved in the popular consciousness. This theory is a bit far-fetched. You don't get this kind of training where you can actually invade a human body unless you've had some surgical experience, in my opinion. So you're saying you think it must have been a doctor? In my opinion, yes. Some experts suggested that a series of violent crimes that took place between 1935 and 1938 in Cleveland, Ohio, could have been the work of the same person who killed Elizabeth. Known as the Cleveland Torso Murderer, it is said that he could be responsible for taking almost 20 lives. Nevertheless, he was never found. The details of the homicides are horrible, and they share some similarities to the case of Elizabeth Short. The case was also associated with the lipstick murders that occurred in Chicago a year before, for which William Hirons was officially charged. According to the investigation, the calligraphy of the messages written with lipstick matched to a large extent with the letters sent by the alleged Black Dahlia murderer. William Hirons was sentenced to 65 years in prison becoming Chicago's longest-serving prisoner. He claimed he was a scapegoat, condemned to have suffered police brutality, and that they had forced him to confess. Another suspect was George Knowlton. His daughter, Janice, after undergoing recovered memory therapy, confessed to having seen her father kill Elizabeth Short. He me from infancy, beatings, beating my mother. Um, beating and killing our animals sadistically. And then when the repressed memories came out, um, it was of him murdering other people. She said, she's not your Aunt Betty. She said, she's just another of your father's She claimed her father and Elizabeth were having an affair and that she was actually staying in their garage when the crime happened. Supposedly, she had assisted her father in dismembering the body. And I saw my father uh, striking her on the right side of her head with, and uh, up popped the word claw hammer, and he grabbed her and he um, yelled at me to get him his rope. And I quickly grabbed it off his workbench right outside the door. And I'm pretty sure that's what the guilt feelings all these years have been, that I felt like I had led to her, helped him kill her. The next I remember is her lying nude on the little bunk bed in the back room. Many other theories involve a folk singer, many doctors, and even the editor of Los Angeles Times Magazine, Norman Chandler, who supposedly got Elizabeth pregnant when she was working as a prostitute and then hired a gangster to kill her. Surprisingly, many Hollywood stars were implicated in the incidents. Some believed there was a high-class satanic cult where people from the industry performed intimate rites. As unbelievable as it sounds, even people like Walt Disney and Orson Welles were in the spotlight. Three months before the crime, Orson Welles had created the set called The House of Mirrors for his film The Lady from Shanghai, where he used several mannequins cut in similar ways to Elizabeth Short's corpse. He was known for having quite a temper and adopting strange behaviors during that time. Supposedly, the victim had an affair with a producer associated with the famous director. Curiously, Columbia's president requested the scenes shot in the House of Mirrors be cut from the film. However, to this day, the crime is still the most obscure mystery that was never solved. 
similar to Jack the Ripper. The case inspired many tributes, books, movies, and series. To this day, the true identity of the killer remains unknown. Today, it's one of the most famous mysteries in Hollywood history.